Hey guys, this is Stray James bringing you guys a kind of little vlog episode where I'm going to be talking about the recent Walking Dead episode because, you know what, this has kind of made me mad. This, spoilers for anyone who hasn't watched the episode, this is episode 14, season 4, spoilers, Lizzie died, okay? Lizzie died and it killed the character off and I'm not happy about it, okay? Now, a lot of fans are pretty, now, there are a couple of fans out there who are going to say that they are really incited and enthused by, the, by, by Lizzie actually going... And to those people, I say, really, really, because like I, I can't really deal with like the entire, the entire fan base and the hatred that has just developed around Lizzie. Okay, I, I just really can't because honestly, for one, most because for one, let's just take the reasons why people hate the character. They hate the character because I think that the biggest one is because they think that she's insane. Okay, and I'll get to that. I'll get to that whole entire thing in a second. The second reason why they hate the character is because, like, is because like she endangered the group and became like a menace to us all. Okay, they also hate the character because just people hate child actors. Okay, that's generally the overall spoken rule about this entire ordeal. Is that that's usually the reason why they hate him? Is because they either don't like child actors, they didn't like the fact that Lizzie was crazy, and didn't like the fact that she killed Judith. And probably the other, probably Mika a little bit too. Those are probably the three reasons why people usually, you know, hate on her and dislike her. And from an adult's perspective, if I were to take this strictly, if I was to judge Lizzie off the merits that she was an adult, you know, I could actually come up with some pretty good arguments right there. I could actually come up with some pretty good arguments to because this is. Because the way that people I see that hate the character will then use the justification that what she did was good enough justification for her to be killed off. Okay? Because they did not like the character, they wanted to kill her off. Or if they did not like the character, they think that because of whatever action she did, deserves her to be killed off. And to those people, I want to say this. Who gives you the right to say who dies and who doesn't die? What gives you the moral high standard that you can decide who, who is this, you know, beggar, you know, unscrupulous, unmoral person, and who's this high plutocracy of like greatness and moral upbringing? I don't know. I don't know the words for this, but you bas basically, I'm trying to say like, what gives you the right? What gives you the right to say what you want? What that is? Because that's basically asinine. Okay. Because if you're going to just consider her actions, and we're going to judge her actions, I'm going to really judge her actions here, then we have to take the entire story. We're going to, not just this little tiny snippet of the last little end product of her life, but the actual complete and other snippet, okay? Which includes the pre-life before, which we don't actually know much about, but I'm going to try to fill in the blanks here because I'm pretty, I'm pretty much assuming here because th this is the way I kind of see it. So. Lizzie is this little girl, probably about 10 to 12 years old. Probably 10, because I'm assuming she's 12 right now, because that's about the age she looks. Maybe 13, but that's kind of pushing it. But anyways, 10 to 12 years old, and you know, the zombie apocalypse breaks out. This whole world of dead people just start rising from the grave. And you know what? Her mom dies. I'm assuming, and a lot of people are going to be like, well, we didn't see her mom die, what, what are you talking about? Well, she obviously must have died because she wasn't there when, her fa when she had to go put down her father. So obviously her mother's already dead. Now, this is, now that's a pretty traumatic experience, losing your mom. Okay? That's a pretty traumatic experience for anyone losing their parents. Okay? So for a little girl about 10, this must have been insanely hard. It must have been insanely hard to lose a parent. Okay? And then, just a short while next, a short while next, her father dies. Her father dies, and now she's left all alone with just her sister. Okay, they have no one else with them. They have no one else guiding them. They have nothing but each other. Their parents are dead. Okay, psychology-wise, that's a pretty big experience right there. That's a pretty big experience to turn anyone into a messed up person, just on its own merits, okay? 
Probably his fa her father died in some really horrible fashion, too. Because the walkers are not usually kind to people. Uh, actually, I do believe it's actually an episode where I actually mentioned this, so I might have to edit this out. But, yeah. There's that. And the psychology of this is that, what do you do? Do you accept death when you don't even have a concept of death? Because you gotta imagine at this point that whatever concept of death that she had learned is going to be overturned. Because the death, because all the dead that she would previously thought of and that her parents had been droning into her that death is going to happen. Death is a natural part of life. Death is, you know, the end all. is kind of messed up because, like, the dead are rising. The dead are rising from the graves. The dead are rising from the dead. And... Most likely, her parents came back at some point, and her father had to put them down, and then the kids had to put down their father. Yeah. And what do you think as a little kid like that? What do you think? The logical answer in this, and this is spoken by Lizzie herself, is that the dead are not dead. They're just different states. Okay? Just a different state. They're not, they're not, you know, they're not some kind of evil carnivorous creature that could potentially kill you and kill everyone around you and then potentially infect the entire world and destroy everything of all manners of civilization. No, they're just different states. They just start groaning, they start to become angry, they just crotchety at everyone, and they like to bite a lot. That's, that's basically what she's thinking. She's basically in, she basically took a route for most kids when their parents die on a much more like she actually had evidence for this, a much more denial base that she was that they were not dead yet. They were just in a different state. And this is the point where I like to say, think about that. So think about that. Are you saying that psychology wise this this does not have any kind of merits. And I bet people might say this does not have any kind of merits. Well, yes, it does. It does have merits in the whole entire scheme of things. Because you have to think that this is probably the cause to the effect of her being this messed up. Of her being like what she is. And being like what we see in the show today. Alright? And yeah, she did op out someone. Alright? She did op out a couple people. And she did have a messed up terminology for how she thought of these people. Alright? I'm not, I'm not doing, I'm not going to say anything about that because I don't think that was right. But the way in which her, her, her way of thinking was not necessarily wrong. Because for a little kid who's gone through so much, that must have been really traumatic. It must have twisted your mind to a point of where it's been. And a lot of people are going to be like, well, but this call. Calling everyone. Carl is not the entire spoken children of the future. They, he does not have every little thing. And quite frankly, Carl kind of became a different, messed up person in his own right, too. Okay? He's become hardened, but if you really look at it, he's kind of his own little messed up kid of his own self. So, don't give me that, like, Carl is, like, made better, or Carl did this right, or Carl did that right. It, it, it doesn't have any merit to this. doesn't. Plus, they're two different people with two different experiences, two different lives, basically. So you can't really compare like that. So, yeah. If you're going to judge, if you're going to be judging, and you're going to be the all hierarchical judge here, you have to judge it on everything. Look at her life, look at everything she went through, and tell me, does she really deserve to die? Alright? Does she really deserve to die? A little girl. Yeah, I'm going to point this out. A little girl, about 12 to 14, her, her parents have dead. She's been living in hell for about two years. She'd die. Alright. I think I made that point pretty clear. Now, I guess the second part of it is that, well, what could we have done? Like, what could we have done? <laughs> like, what could we have done in this situation? Well, I'm going to tell you this off the bat of my head. You could have done so much. One, just, just, off the, just off the straightness of this, you could have educated her to not think this way. Okay, a lot of people are like, well, they tried to do that. They tried to. No, they didn't. 
Kale never really made an attempt to try to really drone us into, you know, Lizzie's head that they were dead. Or at least try to reverse the psychology so that we can figure out why the reason why she thinks this way, so then we can figure out how to make sure that she doesn't think that way to fix the problem. No, they never try they never try to get to that. They just say they just say like, oh that's bad. Well to a kid well to a kid that's thought this way for so long and had so many instances where so many things have gone wrong, you have to re educate her to think a different way, more strong affirmations, more strong nuance to build in that direction, which they did not do. They did not try any of that. They just were like Nope. She gone. She ain't gonna change. We're just gonna kill her. Okay? Yeah. Not not, not even a second thought now. Not not even a second thought that maybe she can change. Just just a little bit. You, you don't think she can't change? You don't think in a zombie apocalypse where almost everyone switches like that? You don't think she can change? All right, she didn't. They didn't even give her a chance to that. All right, and I'll give you. And I think, and I feel like it was a. It was definitely unfair because they gave Rick a chance. Yes, Rick, the guy we we all consider the main character. They gave so much of a chance. They gave a chance above all chances with him. They gave him. Let's see. Um, he went crazy. Okay, he went crazy after his wife died. No, no figure. The same thing happened. You know, his wife dies. He goes completely ape crazy. Go kills a lot of walkers, and then starts pretending to to hear his dead friends in the background. Does anyone think that they should kill him? And a lot of people are gonna be like, "Well, that was less dangerous, though. Rick was less dangerous." Well, considering that also he's supposed to be the leader for one. He's supposed to be the leader at this time, and then he's also supposed to be like this major. You know, moralist. He's supposed to be the leader for one, and then he also. My biggest point of evidence is that he's dangerous. Is the fact about this time is the fact that he also tried to kill Tyrese's group. Points to the fact that he really was dangerous. About the same as Lizzie's. Okay. I mean, it was just on a different basis. And you know what the group was like? The group was like, you know what? Let's give him time. Let's give him time to start thinking a different way. They give him time, and look what happens. And with all their care and help, they eventually make Rick to a better man and to the guy he is today. Which is awesome. He's become a good character. You know, he always was a good character, but I mean, like, he's become a semi-sane person again. But with Lizzie, they did nothing with that. They just... Killed her, did not even try to give the same kind of thinking to Rick. Okay? And I just think that was unfair. I think that was just plain, blatant unfairness and kind of hypocritical to the up max. Because that was just like. What? So, yeah. It could have educated her right there. And then it's like another part they could then what else could they have done if you guys don't like the educator well then just watch it is it really that hard to have a baby in one hand and then have a little girl on the other there were two adults okay there were two adults who could have easily dealt with the situation at hand there were two adults that could have easily dealt with this very easily. Tyrese, he's a big guy. He could easily watch Lizzie. Carol. Carol and Lizzie are like mother and mother and child. They could have easily dealt with that. They could have easily kept a watch on her until they got the terminus, and then they could have actually given her the health and care she needed so that she could become better. Okay? I, would that have been easy? No. I don't think that would have been easy at all. I think it would have been terribly hard. But, that was still an option. There was still that option in there. Instead of just killing. The ultimate. No go backs. The ultimate. And if that doesn't float your boat, well then, you just put it under house arrest. And I know this, this is the most terrible option, and I probably would guess this would be suicide, but... 
put her under house arrest. You know, live in that house for a little bit. Try to change her, term, her psychology just a little bit to try to start thinking like a normal little kid about her time. Talk to her about her feelings and all that kind of stuff. Again, the same thing I told you earlier. We educate her to think better. And it... But they don't do that. They don't do that. They just want to kill her. The instant up moral punishment is to kill. And this is why those sweet comments earlier where I said that like, people hated the character and why they tried to justify this as a way so that they can hate the character even more and get him off the show. These weren't good justifications for why you should get the character off the show. In fact, this should have actually made you want to keep her on the show. Because she was a flawed character. She was a character that needed help. Probably needed our help to keep her alive. Us as fans, I should say, is to keep her alive. So, yeah. We didn't do that. We wanted her to die. All because... All because. So... This is my kind of little, little talk about, little spiel about it. Um, I hope I talked about everything I want to talk about. And, yeah. We should honestly feel a little bit ashamed for ourselves. Because the people that want her dead, you, you're a little bit messed up. Just a little. So, you guys watching? I'll see you guys next time.